Uh, I'm an archaeologist. I work for the canton of Neuchâtel in Switzerland, and I mainly devote my time to writing up studies about archaeological investigations that have been done prior to construction work on the A5 highway that runs through the canton. So today I wanted to, uh, I would like to present um, some reconstruction drawings we did for a project uh, that was uh, uh, in, done in the Arroz River Delta. Uh, first I'm going to say some things about this study so that you can put the drawings into context. And then I'm going to explain how we, what the process was when we that we went through to do them, and uh, I'll show you some challenges we faced, and then I'll have some final thoughts that came to me when I was preparing this presentation. So uh, this study was done, uh, the framework was a rescue project uh, that was done via, um, prior to the construction of a highway. Um, before this study, before the archaeological investigations were done, uh, virtually nothing was known about this area, about the, the delta. Uh, nothing about the paleohydrology, nothing about the archaeology. So uh, it was decided that we would put together a, quite a large team, about 20 people, of specialists from the earth life si and life scientists and of archaeologists. Uh, and the aims were to locate the uh, past river channels and uh, to see what they're, how they behaved uh, through time and also to see if we could, if it was really possible to um, find archaeology uh, in this very dynamic, dynamic um, landscape. So this is the geographical setting of the Aues Delta. Uh, it's in the western part of Switzerland. It lies on the lake of Neuchâtel, which you might know from the lake dwellings that are, um, that are situated here. Um, the Aras River is, um, uh, is resurgent that, that comes out in Saint-Sulpice here. It runs through this Val de Travers here and then ver through very deep gorges right here and uh, flows out into the delta, which is here and finally uh, out into the Lake Neuchâtel. This is um, an aerial view of the delta. Uh, this is where the, um, the archaeological investigations are located. They're here. This is the delta, this part of the delta. And you can see that the river is entirely canalized uh, today. We did uh, test fitting um, long trenches. These were very useful in detecting paleo uh, channels and their stratigraphy. And we also did um, uh, excavations. Um, these uh, investigations, they are located in the, in the upstream part of the delta and they concern about two thirds of the width of the entire delta. These are all the disciplines and methods that we use for this study. Uh, as I said, earth and life sciences, uh, archaeology, analysis of aerial photos, study of the fluctuations of the lake levels for 10,000 years. Uh, there are also, uh, we also did a study of historical records and uh, the dating methods were mostly, of course, uh, typology, but also radiocarbon, lithostratigraphy, and we were also able to reconstruct a whole biostratigraphy uh, by uh, the, the mollusks. So this is a, an, an overview of the results. Uh, we can say now that we found over four, 40 paleo channels from the 9,000 um, 9, BC to the medieval uh, period. The earliest evidence of human presence in the delta dates to the Middle Neolithic, 4,500 BC. There are no finds, but it's more, um, uh, we know that they opened, they, slashed, they did slashing and burning of some surfaces. 
And then from the late Neolithic onwards, most channels actually contain archaeological remains, which was quite a surprise for us. Um, however, there are no Iron Age uh, channels or archaeological remains, and this is probably this might be, be these Iron Age channels might be situated uh, in the third of the of the delta that we didn't investigate, or they might have been eroded by later channels. So, uh, as you can I think probably imagine, there is a lot of pages of words and diagrams, complicated diagrams and data behind uh, this overview and uh, the aim of our reconstruction drawings are to illustrate the thin synthesis chapter that pulls all of this uh, information together and to really uh, try to bring this study to life and it's also um, to show the in, in environmental change and human <coughs> impact in the, on the landscape to a wider public. Uh, it's also some kind of a tradition in the Châtel to do such drawings. Uh, there are some, oops, sorry, these are from uh, beauvais les Baquier, and these, these are um, some drawings from beauvais les Batailles, which are um, studies, also interdisciplinary studies that were done on, on the highway. So uh, first we had to decide which periods were interesting, how could we, where we could really show that there is a uh, change. And we decided to show the older Atlantic, 6,000 BC, 6 to 7,000 BC, the final Neolithic with the early Lucians, the late Bronze Age, Roman period, and the early evil, medieval period, sorry. Um, then afterwards we had to discuss the geographical scope that we wanted to take into, into account. Should we show the entire delta or just certain sections? And also the viewpoint was very important. Should we take the same viewpoint for all of the drawings or a different, a different viewpoint for each period? And we also discussed seasons. Which seasons should we show? Should we show a huge snowstorm or uh, things like that. Uh, and then we decided uh, that we would uh, do some trial drawings for the first four periods. So first um, we did, we had to get the relief of these, for these uh, drawings. Uh, we did an overlay of aerial views. This is a view uh, from the lake looking to the uh, Jura Mountains and this is uh, the, the sketch that we were able to make from it. And then afterwards, uh, we put in the different uh, periods that we wanted, and especially um, the sorry, the different lake levels that are fluctuating here. And here are the uh, channels. Sorry. Uh, so these are uh, four the four uh, preliminary hand drawings. They're aquarelles uh, with the same viewpoint. And we also did some trial drawings with different viewpoints. This is uh, looking to the, to the west of the delta, and this is looking to the east of the delta. It would have been uh, interesting. There are lake settlements here uh, bronze, uh, from the late Bronze Age. So afterwards, we, got, we took these six drawings and we discussed them with other, our colleagues. And um, during this discussion, we decided that uh, this is the best way um, to show what we wanted to show, the environmental sh change and the human impact. Um, we also decided that uh, it was better to not um, to go too near because the archaeological information is not always very uh, sure. Um, then we also decided that the summer would be best to, uh, to illustrate the vegetation co uh, cover. And we also had some remarks that this looked more like the Nile Delta, and <laughs> 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 that there's too much water, too many channels, and so we had to sort of scale that back. And uh, we also decided to enlarge the scope here because there are other uh, there are lake settlements uh, situated here in Auvergne, 
And there's also a very uh, large Roman villa that is quite important for the region. So at this time, these are all hand drawings. At this time, we, found a, we finally found a graphics tablet that was affordable and that gave us enough possibilities to do very fine drawings, to do loads of colors and different things. And this is, this is I would say, a, a decisive point because we, this way, the person who was drawing these, uh, doing these drawings, we could really discuss and go back and forth, and I could come with ideas, and she would come with colors and and uh, lines and things like that. And we went. Uh, this allowed us to be very, very um, uh, free, <laughs> free when doing these drawings. <coughs> So um, I'm going to just show you two drawings, the Late Bronze Age and the Roman period. This is what we have from the Late Bronze Age. It's a concentration of archaeological material, about 15,000 potsherds, actually. Um, it's one of the largest complexes, terrestrial uh, complexes that we have. As a, an, um, uh, there are no settlement structures that go with it, uh, but we could. We were still able to decide that this is domestic waste, probably from from a nearby settlement. And the Malaskan evidence shows us that it's uh, there's quite a lot of permanently cleared ground around, but also mature forest. So what we have is. A settlement that was situated here uh, between 950 and 900, and uh, for this time we had no contemporaneous sites stated by dendrochronology in the vicinity. But there is a de our dendrochronologists have a have a theory, a hypothesis. They've um, seen that all of the bays of the Lake, Lake Neuchâtel they have. Um, Late Bronze Age settlements that go through the whole Late Bronze Age. These are found, they call them founder villages. And then there are satellite villages that appear and disappear. Uh, there is one such village for Beuve l'Abbaye and one in Autrive Champrevert that is actually quite famous. And so we decided that um, they, they, their hypothesis is that there is also such a founder village here in Auvergne and another one here in Gortaillot. So we decided to put those two villages in our uh, drawing. And there is also there are also old signs, from, uh, old uh, finds from a site called Gortaillot La Fabrique. These were uh, these are finds from the 19th century, uh, and they predate our settlement. So we decided to put that in our drawing too. So here is the settlement of Oudry uh, a few, just a few um, houses and cleared ground. And here is uh, the Auvergne site and the Cortaillot site. And this is uh, the site of Cortaillot La Fabrique that is in ruins. So going on to the Roman period, this is what we have. Uh, this is what we have for the Roman period, uh, several large cut stone blocks that fell into the river, and also a uh, bank reinforcement made of uncut limestone blocks. And the Molluscan evidence is, goes quite strongly as, uh, for uh, woodland nearby. Also, uh, some permanently cleared land, but mostly mature woodland. Uh, so this is. Uh, where we found these things, and this is where the Roman villa is. Uh, this is actually the only contemporaneous site in the vicinity, and this is what we drew. We didn't draw, draw very much for the K-type structure here. It's, uh, however, we drew um, the Roman villa. This is actually underlying this picture, uh, underlying this drawing. There is a, a picture of a model that is uh, shown in the Latinium. And we also uh, put mature forest here nearby the structure, but here we opened all, this, all these regions here. However, we don't have any real data for this. 
But we do have data from the Beauvais Plateau that is, uh, that, that is here, lies to the west, and where there is evidence for a real orthogonal cadastre from the Roman period. So we, de we, we decided to put this, to show this here too, especially because this is a very important site. It's, it's one of the largest villages, I think it is the largest villa, that lies to the north of the Alps. And uh, these people have to eat, and so we put in uh, fields here. So, uh, coming to my final thoughts, these are the um, final five drawings. And my final thoughts are that uh, these drawings are actually, they show a combination of the state of our knowledge today in 2016 <coughs> about the past environments and the human occupation in the area. They also show some hypotheses. I, I personally think they serve their purpose well, that is to illustrate the synthesis chapter of our study. However, I'm, they're not really standalone in illustrations, and if they go off to lead their life on internet or somewhere, uh, they could be easily misinterpreted, or people might think this is really a re reality and it isn't. So that's um, it's a bit risky business. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you.